warm welcome to you all as we gather as the six for our Sunday worship today. Although if I'm honest, it's a little bit nippy out here at the moment, as we, of course, as you can see, we're very much into the autumnal season with all the leaves falling all around us. Day 18 of the current lockdown. And I wonder how you are at this moment. It's, I'm sure, still been a very tricky time for many of us feeling that we are isolated or indoors rather than being able to be out and about and gathering with each other. And as we look ahead, of course, with the news of vaccines, there is that hope that once again, sooner rather than later, we will be able to get back to a measure of normal life in some shape or form. Certainly as Christmas approaches, and we've got many different thoughts and ideas to help us celebrate Christmas this year, albeit in a very different way. But then nevertheless, we can always find ways in which we remember how Jesus came to be with us, to shine as light in the darkness in all times. Just take a few moments to be open to receiving the presence of God in our midst this morning before we start with this opening prayer. In these times, when we are dispersed and scattered, we gather wherever we are, coming as we are, to meet with the living Lord. And so, Father, send your Holy Spirit in power among us, we pray. Reveal to us anew the fullness of Jesus' gracious love. Come, Spirit, and fill us with the fire of Jesus' love to renew and transform our lives, so we may be the people who bless, so we may bring his love, peace, hope, and new life to anxious lives in these uncertain times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now let us lift our voices as we sing our first song.
Take a few moments to reflect back on recent days, the week. Maybe there's things that we know that we regret doing, 
or regret not doing when we know that we've gone our own way rather than God's way. Let us bring those things before the Lord who is gracious and always ready and willing to enable us to start afresh with him. So we say together, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, Lord God, our Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Our reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, that you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it for me, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, today and always. Amen. Today we celebrate Christ the King, Christ the Son of God in glory. Royalty, and we all know what royalty means, don't we? Royalty means beautiful clothes, it means living in a palace, it means a life of privilege and ease. It means a life where you have servants to do what you tell them to do, where you are better than the rest. Privilege, superiority. 
is Jesus that kind of king? I don't think so. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is a king and yet he came, lived a life on earth with a humble birth, born into quite challenging circumstances, not wealthy. He worked as a carpenter, as his father had been a carpenter. He worked as a humble tradesman. He was an itinerant preacher. His friends were outcasts and labourers, people in the gig economy, villains, people on the edge of society. He chose to lay aside wealth and majesty and comfort and worldly trappings, which he could have had. He could have been born into a palace. He chose to be born among us, to be with us, God with us. He lived among us, cared for us, searching for the lost, binding up the broken, healing the hurt. And in his death, he died the death of a common criminal and was buried in a borrowed grave. Not the life of privilege you would expect for royalty. Our reading today talks about Jesus, the Son of Man, coming in his glory. And you could read it as a recipe for self-salvation, for ingratiating oneself with God, for earning your way into heaven. Or maybe not. Because the eternal life, the redemption that is offered here, that is talked about here, is not a wage, it's not something to be earned, but it is God's free gift. It is his gift of love to all who choose to accept it. When Jesus addressed the people, he was addressing who they are rather than what they did. It's about the core of their identity, the core of our identity. The sheep that Jesus speaks of are those who have lived in mercy, those who have lived as those bearing Christ's light, whether they knew it or not. They are those who have lived lives responding in love, in mercy. The goats are those who have constantly been asking the question about, is this the right thing to do? Who should I be helping? Should I do this? Should I do that? Seeking a set of rules, maybe. But redemption is not about following a set of rules. It's about a way of being. It's about the core of our identity. Discipleship isn't rule-based or prescriptive. It's a deep-seated response to receiving, to acknowledging and receiving openly the love that God pours out for us, for each of us, recognising and responding to that love. And in that response, making ourselves vulnerable and open and willing to respond to the hurt and the injustice and the suffering that we see around us. And that response becomes a part of who we are if we are truly disciples of his. The sheep and the goats both have the same response when the Son of Man speaks to them and say, says that I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was a stranger, I was naked. Each of them has the same response, but it comes from a different place. I didn't know it was you. For the sheep, not knowing that it was Jesus, didn't matter because they were responding to need, just responding to human need. To the goats, maybe they were looking for somebody worthy of their response and they were saving up their energies for when they thought it was best to use them.
it shouldn't make a difference who it is we're offering our help to. It shouldn't have made a difference to them. Throughout the Old and the New Testament, there is a theme, recurring theme, that peace and the reign of God are linked with, in, with justice and care for the poor. There is no separating them out. There's no putting them in boxes and saying, we'll deal with this now and the other later. They are inextricably linked. There's a thing which I keep seeing popping up on Facebook, and it's a good reminder. It says... You will never look into the eyes of someone that Jesus doesn't love. We don't have to waste time thinking about who is worthy or who is appropriate to receive help. Everyone has that spark of God in them. Everyone deserves that love. Everyone deserves to live with justice to live lives of peace and harmony. In baptism, at the end of the service, the candidate is given a lighted candle and we say to them, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. And everyone responds, shine as light in the world to the glory of God the Father. That's quite a commission. Shine as light in the world to the glory of God the Father. The sheep are those who, knowingly or unknowingly, have lived out that baptismal vocation to be light in dark places, as Christ himself was and as we are called to be for him. If our king, our servant king, chose to live as one ready to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger and clothe the naked, surely so should we, and not as a tick list of ways to get into heaven or things to do to ingratiate ourselves to God, but more just as a response to that love poured out unstintingly on us. We follow a servant king, not some worldly confection of privilege, wealth and separation, not some parody of perfection. We follow a king who doesn't need those trappings. We're called on to live as best we can in imitation of him. So let's take for ourselves that commission from the baptism service. And I say to you, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. And may each of us shine as light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
in our distress, be with our families, friends and neighbours, our country and our world. Give health to the sick, hope to the fearful and comfort to the mourners. Give wisdom to our frontline and key workers, insight to our government and patience to us all. Overcome disease with the power of your new life through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue in prayer, we will spend a small amount of time focused on different groups with some quiet to bring before God those who are on our hearts. We pray for all places of education, for children, young people, staff and students. We give God thanks for the sacrifice and commitment of all staff in places of education serving those who seek to learn. We pray that all might be nurtured and cared for, and that every needful resource would be made available, that all lives can flourish in these difficult times, and that no one would be overlooked. We pray particularly for the schools in our benefits, Lower Halstow, Holywell, Hartnip, Newington, and especially we remember before God all the families and staff at Iway School in this challenging time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are elderly, isolated and vulnerable. We pray for deliverance, protection and comfort. We also hold before God those who care for them, that they might be strengthened and encouraged. We spend a few quiet moments lifting those on our hearts before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for businesses, the workplace and economic well-being. We pray for the economic well-being for the whole country and remember before God those who face great uncertainty in the future of their employment. We lift before God those who have lost their jobs. God, please renew our commitment to our common life together, that we may care for and love each other in all circumstances. So we spend a few quiet moments lifting those people and circumstances on our hearts before God.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the NHS and all key workers. We thank God for all those who continue to work in challenging circumstances and who are at risk because they serve others in love. God, we ask that you would watch over and protect them and all those whom they love, prosper their work and lift and encourage them at their point of need. We spend a few quiet moments lifting those people and places on our hearts before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our national and local government. God, we pray that you would be with all of those who are in positions of authority and responsibility. That you would grant your discernment and wisdom as they make challenging decisions. We pray particularly for areas where there are levels where the levels are high at the moment, including swale and famine, for wise decisions to be made by all to bring that risk lower. We spend a few quiet moments lifting those people, organisations and situations on our hearts before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are all God's beloved children. So we say John 11 verse 3, Lord, the one you love is ill. As we lift before you all who are grieving and all suffering with physical and mental ill health, we bring, God, bring your comfort, hope, and peace to those who grieve, those who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. Strengthen and support them as they provide and provide what they need. We spend a few quiet moments lifting those on our hearts before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we bring all of our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we proclaim and affirm our faith in God, the God revealed to us by Jesus. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
as this current lockdown continues, we may look ahead to the coming week with a mixture of feelings. Some of us may be feeling anxious or even fearful. And therefore, let us hold to the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples way back then, but also continues to speak to us now in the midst of difficult and challenging moments. Those words were, peace, my peace, I give to you. So let us receive this blessing with that thought in mind. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you all, or those you know and love, and care for, this day and evermore. Amen. And so go in the peace of Christ. Go and share the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. I do encourage you to join with us also in praying each day uh, for our nation. There are two opportunities at 12 o'clock via Zoom, but also at 6 o'clock Facebook Live. So do take that moment to be praying for our nation at this really important time. There will be Zoom coffee again and hopefully there'll be a few of you that would love to join in that time of fellowship as well. God bless you. See you again soon. Bye for now.